And everyone, let me formally declare this meeting of the Hunters Hill Local Planning Panel open. When we commence these meetings, it's usual for us to introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm David Lloyd, I'm a lawyer, I'm a QC, I'm a former judge of the Land and Environment Court, I'm a former acting judge of the Supreme Court, I'm currently a professor of law at Western Sydney University. Ryan. Uh, David Logan. Um, oh, I'm still there. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm an architect and planner. Um, I specialise in heritage. I um, am a director of uh, heritage consultancy and a former member of the Heritage Council of New South Wales. I sit on other planning panels as well. I'm Chris Young. I'm a tower planner and traffic engineer. Um, nearly 50 years experience in, in development control. Um, 30 years in local government, 22 years as a director of planning, uh, 20 years as a, as a consultant and I'm also a member of other panels as well. And I'm Virginia Wise, I'm a community representative and I have over 30 years of commercial and residential interior design experience. All right, with that we can move on to the agenda, the first of which is the confirmation of the minutes of the previous planning meeting held on the 21st of November. Uh, I notice there is a typographical error, uh, a reference to, uh, on the top of page two, Section 455, that should be a reference to section 8.4, uh, that being an application for review. Uh, I think, are there any other changes? Well, well Mr Chairman, I'll, I'll do those, uh, those minutes of being a, a member of that panel, but with the addition that um, condition Gen 12 uh, in regards to building use of single occupancy should be inserted into the list of uh, standard conditions on, uh, on page 3. Right. Uh, then we can move on to the next item on the agenda. This is the modification application at 27 Nelson Parade, Hunters Hill. Uh, we have a written request for an adjournment. Does anyone want to speak to that first? There is a written request. So from uh, Mr. Baylog seeking an adjournment. Um, I can speak. It's not about a specifically the but that, 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 that we should deal with that application first. Do you want to speak to it? Yes. Please come forward. For the record, who you are? Yep. Uh, my name is Ian Stewart. I'm a consultant town planner representing the applicant. All right. Why do you want an adjournment? Um, so the proposal was lodged over 15 months ago. Um, I understand as part of that legal letter that was sent today, there was a log of all the um, uh, phone calls and inquiries made with council uh, by Erica Marshall, uh, and uh, who's a, a consulting architect. Uh, also, there were members from my firm who made a number of phone calls. We estimate there's somewhere in the order of about 30 requests to find out the status of the application. Um, it's my understanding we did not receive one response from Council during that time. Um, we're now at a point where we have a report where we're facing refusal for modifications which I've stepped the panel through today at the site inspection. There's quite a number of uh, modifications and it's typical practice that um, some modifications may get approved, some may get refused, but a, a, a point blank refusal of the entire application uh, is very unusual. Uh, and reading the council report, um, there was quite a few um, points raised there about lack of detail and um, you know, more information required. We made over uh, approximately 30 contacts with council. Not once were we given due process for the, the council to come back to us and say, there, here are some issues. Um, and as I said, we're now at a point where we're, we're facing potential refusal. Um, if, of course, the panel was of a mind to give a favourable determination, we, we wouldn't want to postpone, but I, I don't know that that's going to happen for everything today. Um, so that, that's, that's uh, why we, we've requested that postponement, so that uh, if there are issues that need to be addressed in further detail, uh, we'd like to be given that opportunity to, to provide that information. Um, I can talk further about the proposal if you wish. Or no, 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 we'll hear the objective first. Yeah, yeah. So we that just want to know why you want an adjournment. Yeah, that, that is the reason why. Thank you. 
Thank you. Yeah, just a really, really no, we're happy we're not going to adjourn it. I can tell you that the panel it is satisfied that it has all the information it needs to determine this application. Okay. That's the only question. Okay. And we are prepared to consider it this afternoon, right. finally, okay. and completely. Okay. All right? Okay. So you can, you can take a back seat while we hear the objective. Okay. So my request to speak at today's it, it, meeting... It, it, we'll it'll follow the objector's okay. statement. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hutton. Thank you. For the record. My, my name is James Hutton. Uh, I'm a barrister and I appear for Mr. Diab, who is the owner of 29 Nelson Trade. Uh, oh, I, to... can, I can tell you we've got his written submission. Yes. We've got the written submission of uh, Spark Helmore, yes. which we have read. Yes. You have three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't wish to repeat what's in the written submission. I, I'd only add this by way of further comment on the uh, report that, or the recommendation that's before the panel. Uh, firstly, that recommendation is fully supported by Mr Diab, who is the person whose amenity stands to be impacted by the unauthorised developments the subject of the modification. Uh, secondly, there are additional reasons for refusing the application that are additional to those to the four reasons specified under the heading recommendation on page 22 of the report, and they are these. Firstly, the panel could not be satisfied that this is within section 4.55 of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. There is an insufficient basis to conclude that there is minimal environmental impact, and that's apparent from the report itself and I refer the panel in particular to page six and seven of the report. Um, and, and, and in particular, the, the, the reasoning there, um, particularly if one goes over to page seven, looks at the first paragraph, it says that minimal environmental impact, reading the last sentence there, has not been demonstrated in this instance and it's there referring to modifications to a garage and it's impossible to assess the extent of the modifications. We know that a room of about 80 square metres completely unauthorised has been built under that garage and there's very significant encroachment on my client's easement um, and none of that is detailed. So there's just no possibility of the panel concluding that there's been minimal environmental impact. And then the same conclusion is reached with respect to other areas of the work and one sees that most clearly in respect of the landscaped area that was in the northern portion of the site. There's absolutely no indication from the application of the extent to which the sandstone escarpment that was there has been excavated. Um, certainly my client's position is that that was a vegetated area with a very significant uh, piece of sandstone escarpment and it's been uh, excavated by four or five metres. Now, without um, having any information about the extent of excavation, it's simply impossible to conclude that 4.55 is satisfied. So that's an additional reason why the application should be refused. A further reason why the application should be refused are the unauthorised stairs, the subject of the application. Um, the, the report that's before you says that the stairs do not form part of the application, but if you turn to page eight of the application, you'll see there are the modifications to the first floor level and they're described in extraordinarily brief terms but the seventh bullet point down is a stone landing leading to additional stairs along the western boundary. That's the boundary that um, uh, my client's property um, adjoins and you can see a photo of those stairs in photograph three and, and also photograph five. And it really is a rather extraordinary landing, um, plainly completely non-compliant with the building code. It goes up almost to roof height and it overlooks my client's property. So Mr Diab has some difficulty understanding why in the report it is said that the stairs do not form part of the modification application. They appear to. Uh, the real conclusion ought be that there is absolutely no planning justification put forward for them. There is no detail about their construction. There's no analysis of whether they satisfy the building code and that they are a further reason why the application should be refused. Um, those are the only additional points I wish to make. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, now we're here from the applicant. 
Um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to those points. I think that's probably the best thing to do. Um, so in, in relation to the point about the minimal environmental impact, um, we, I'll go back to what I said earlier. Um, we were not given an, an opportunity for if for council never came back to us and, and explained to us they had an issue with the uh, proposal not being classified as a 1A. Um, uh, the opportunity within 15 months with us contacting council on at least 30 occasions was for council to write back to us and say, either withdraw the application or delete components of the application that would trigger it as a 4.552. Um, as I've said earlier, we are able to withdraw components of the application if there are certain aspects of it that the panel is not supportive of or the panel considers to be classified as a 4552. Um, that may be the undercroft area below the garage. I, I, I presume that that may be um, one aspect. And the other aspect may be the, um, the uh, concreting of the area to the, to the north of the property where the car parking is. Um, we believe that the works in that area, within the um, car park area, um, were relatively minimal given that the uh, area was quite um, uh, just comprising rubble and, and, and building material was scraped back, it was hard sandstone, and they've improved the situation by putting a, a, a narrow um, base of, of concrete in that area. Uh, in relation to the easement, we indicated today that yes, there are encroachments into the easement, but there is uh, access to the uh, to the conduits in that area, uh, and that's a matter between the uh, landowner in favour and um, benefiting from the from the easement, and access can be provided at, at any stage. Um, in relation to the unauthorised stairs, I'm, I'm of the understanding, and this is uh, uh, what was in the council report, report is that those stairs were approved um, as part of a modification through the court, um, and that, that's why they don't, don't form part of this application. At the time of when we lodged the application, we were of the understanding that they weren't approved, but I've been advised uh, by my client's lawyers that they were previously approved, and that's why in the, in the council report it was indicated that that doesn't form part of the application. Um, there are quite a quantum of changes, but as we saw today, the the introduction of the windows do not cause any greater privacy impact than um, what currently occurs on the site, and the existing screening protects the, the neighbour from additional privacy impacts. Um, the changes to the building height don't cause any view loss or overshadowing impacts. Um, the balcony facing the harbour is of a lesser scale than the pergola and is quite consistent with the, the built form, which is reinforced in the, in the council report. Um, things like the introduction of the turntable, um, the council report says there's no issue with that. So what we would say in terms of the documentation that I handed out today, at least at a minimum where the council officer has said that they don't have issues with those individual components, we'd like to see that uh, hopefully supported. Uh, and if there are aspects that you don't support, well, um, you know, uh, that we're quite willing to accept a refusal for those components. But a, but a blanket refusal without any opportunity to ever respond over 15 months doesn't follow due process, and we hope that uh, the panel would um, take that into consideration. Thank you. Okay. Uh, like, like you, the panel has had these, these reports and plans for a week, and we have been able to digest them and understand them particularly with your help on site. And for that reason, the panel is in a position to make a determination now. And I can tell you that we have been discussing the matter amongst ourselves. We've listened to what you said and what Mr. Hutton has said, and we have come to an agreed position. And it is as follows. It is a unanimous decision. The panel is uh, of a mind to refuse this application completely for a number of reasons. Firstly, uh, the development is not substantially the same development 
as the development which, for which consent was originally granted within the meaning of section 4.5 of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. Secondly, the development provide, fails to provide, fails to satisfy the provisions of section 4.15 of the Act in that the proposal fails to satisfy clause 4.4 of the Hunters Hill Local Environmental Plan in relation to floor space. Particularly, the proposal introduces significant increase in floor that breaches the development standard. The development does not provide a better planning outcome than an otherwise compliant development. Next, the development fails to satisfy the provisions of section 4.5 of the Act in that the proposal fails to satisfy Clause 6.9 of the Hunters Hill Local Environmental Plan in relation to landscaped area. The extent of the built works, particularly for the purpose of car parking, would result in a significant breach of the development standard. The development does not provide a better planning outcome than an otherwise compliant development. Next, the development fails to satisfy the provisions of section 4.15 of the Act in that the proposal satis fails to satisfy clause 4.3 of the Hunters Hill Local Environmental Plan in relation to height. The proposal results in an increase at in height and fails to demonstrate any impacts on visual or residential amenity that are, are within acceptable minutes. The development does not provide a better planning outcome than an otherwise compliant development. Next, the encroachments into the easement, particularly by the garage, will have an unacceptably adverse impact on the adjoining property number 29, Milson Parade. Those are the reasons for the refusal. Reference was made by Mr Hutton to the uh, what was said to be the, the unauthorised stairs, stairs not shown. If they're not shown on the application for modification, we can't deal with them. So there's no mention of them. If they're unauthorised, they remain unauthorised. We don't know. But they are the five grounds of refusal which we, the panel, unanimously adopt. And I think it is adopted unanimously. And that is the determination of the panel. Thank you very much. Which brings us to the next item. This is the proposed development at number three, Hunter Street, Woolwich. And we have a number of speakers who wish to uh, address the panel. Uh, I'll call each of you in turn. Uh, Miss Colleen Tracy, are you here? For the record, your name and address, please. Um, Colleen Tracy. We have your written objection, yes. which we have read. Yes. All right. <laughs> Now's your opportunity to either add to it or highlight it. Uh, yes, can I just read out what I've written down? Well, you have three minutes. Okay. Go on. Speed reading. <laughs> um, You're in Matthew Street. No, I'm. I'm actually uh, in Gale Street, Gale Street, 21 and Street. my property, the rear of my property, directly faces um, the proposed development. I understand. Yes. Uh, and I've lived there. I've had the property for 30 years, so I've lived there quite a while. Proceed. So um, I understand that the new owner buying this property wants to put their stamp on the area and. Um, I feel that it's not taking into consideration the other buildings behind in Hunter Street. The sandstone wall that runs along the western um, side of Hunter Street has got a listing on it. It's um, an old stacked wall. It runs from um, almost where the lane starts down to the end of um, the street, which is the Point Road. There are some gateways in and there are two drive three driveways in that area. But basically the wall stands and it is listed apparently. The front wall is um, sandstone block wall. It looks to be old. There are stone steps that go up from Mayfield Avenue. I feel that those two walls should be saved if possible because they're part of the character of Hunter Street. 
When you walk along Hunter Street, you get glimpses of the harbour. So you see the bridge, you see the sailing boats, you see the vegetation, and a lot of people use Hunter Street to access the wharf and um, also the pub. It's, it's a well-used little street. So my first question is about the rock um, outcrop there. Um, there has been so much removal of that natural rock um, and it has to be treated as a whole, not just as the part of rock that's been taken from uh, number three. So far, um, number 12 has had massive amounts of the rock shelf removed um, to build this house and basement. Number three is currently being dug out now and is at least five metres deep with further digging due to be done next week. The trucks have been running up and down Hunter Street for weeks to remove loads, truckloads of stone. It's all gone. Number nine, Hunter Street, Verdelay, has had the rock shelf um, removed to provide basement parking from Mayfield Avenue. And anecdotal evidence says that the basement has flooded in Mayfield Avenue. Number three, proposed to remove further parts of this shelf to provide underground parking and a basement. Number one, has a DA approved to remove further part of the rock shelf to provide underground parking. And number two, Mayfield Avenue, which adjoins number one, Hunter Street, has also removed more stone shelf to provide parking. Um, the effect of this, I think it, it, it has some sort of effect on the drainage within the area. It struck me a few weeks ago when flying into Sydney that Hunter's Hill is wonderful. From the air, it's all green. But currently, this beautiful canopy of greenery at number three, the Magnolia grandiflora, the eucalyptus, the jacaranda, and there's a little uh, flowering magnolia in the back, um, is all going to be gone. Um, and a clipped, clipped garden just doesn't have the same impact to the environment. This canopy forms part of the streetscape um, and with the adequate distance between the houses, um, none, of, none of this will survive once the excavation starts. starts. The other um, uh, part of the building application that worries me um, is the glazing to the building. Um, uh, Tony Coote, uh, in the latest um, Hunters Hill Trust um, magazine, volume 57, page two, page five, number two, page five, has two photos taken, one taken in 200, 2018, one in 2019 from Fig Tree Bridge. And this structure at number three, Hunter Street, will have exactly the same impact as he's pointed out in his recent article in the Huntersville Trust magazine. That's your three minutes on the floor. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. We do have your written material. Yeah, can I table this? You can. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes, Thank well, you. there's a question. Could I just ask you about Tony Kurt's article, which I haven't seen? No, but, but I, can, what, what, I can give you that as well. What was the well. point of that you were making? The, the point that I was making is that once this greenery is gone, what happens is the glazing is exposed. When you come in from the river, these two old houses, number one and number three, they form a pair. And while I know number three has been, um, had a fire in it, the footprint of the building is still there. It is capable of being restored if you are willing to peel back the layers. And I do know that the staircase, the original staircase, is still in the house. So I don't know if if you've seen that, but the tenant tells me the staircase is still there, but it's covered over. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Do you want this page as well? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Barbara Dorsch. As with this previous speaker, we have your written material. I live in number seven, Gale Street, Woolwich. I live in the house that Mr Gale built in 1890. Now, I front Gale Street and I back 
Hunter Street. And I have Hunter Lane going down one side. What concerns me is the stone fence. This has got a heritage. I'm really I'm going to re reiterate what a lot's been said. Is this, it's important that that fence stays and also the steps going down into Mayfield Crescent. The house is very large across the block. So as you walk down Hunter Street, you can look to your right and look down to the harbour. It's one of the beauties of walking down there. This house will take up most of that block. I know they say there's still going to be 50%, but we'll, we will lose a lot of that view. It, it, but the, the original house, number three, was built by George Fisk. It's a pair with number one. Certainly would encourage whoever's bought it rather than build a new house, but we do what they've got. And if they so wish to look at any of our houses, which are all 1890, they can, you know, they're very welcome to have a look. The other thing that concerns me is the removal of mature trees, and you won't be able to replace those trees once they've gone. Uh, mainly, the significance it's out, it just it's not going to fit in with the area. So, this is a national, this is a heritage order, and once it's gone, it's gone, you'll never replace it. And that is part of Australia's history. Australia's history. We are the oldest garden suburb in the country. That's all I've got to say. Okay, thank you. Right, is Mr. or Mrs. Bonichta Bonichta here? Have so I got the spelling? I've got the pronunciation right. Bonichta. Thank you. And um, I'm Don Bonacher. I live in Nine Mayfield Avenue. Nine Mayfield. I'm speaking on behalf of my wife, Jenny, and myself. You're directly opposite on the low side. We're directly opposite on the low side. All right, proceed. Yeah. Um, so um, we made a submission in April when the initial uh, plans came out. Two of the main problems that we saw with uh, the development, one was, or well, our concerns were, uh, basically the retention of the stone fence which faces into Mayfield Avenue um, and it's a, a stone boundary fence um, and it's removal or part removal in order to provide vehicular access from Mayfield Avenue when the existing property has a perfectly uh, usable vehicular entry in Hunter Street. So uh, we also raised issues around the trees and I know the, the conditions that have been provided for deferred consent address the trees to some extent. Um, but those conditions have implicit acceptance of the fact that the wall on Mayfield Avenue will be removed or partly removed and that vehicular access will be broken through that fence into an underground car park. Um, however, the conditions state that the Hunter Street fence, stone fence, must be retained. So we don't understand how this process can mandate the retention, complete and utter retention, of one fence but allow the other to be compromised by the excavation and the entry being provided into the car park. The fence that borders onto Mayfield Avenue is possibly older than the fence in Hunter Street. We have a photo taken from Greenwich in 1904 that clearly shows that fence. So, what we don't understand is by what process does the council differentiate those two structures and the face of those two structures? Right? So this remains for us a significant concern. Um, I understand the panel visited the site today. I was told that, that was going to happen. Um, I trust that the panel members actually noticed how severely affected the Mayfield Avenue streetscape 
has been by a number of recent developments which allowed excavation of multi-car garages <coughs> and entrances cut for those garages through major stone walls. So the streetscape, in my view, has been utterly ruined by what's been allowed to happen in the last few years. And as I said, I hope the panel members actually had a good look at what has actually been done um, and the way that that has actually disturbed the streetscape. So basically I'm asking, we're asking, please don't allow another scar on the streetscape purely to provide access to yet another large underground excavated garage and please respect the heritage of that existing fence and don't allow it to be compromised. Thank you. Now, who wants to speak on behalf of the applicant? Uh, thank you, panel members and gallery, uh, for the opportunity to speak today. Uh, Andrew Martin, Town Planner, on behalf of the applicant. Um, I'll quickly start with some of the responses to the neighbours' submissions because there are quite a number of uh, elements on, that have actually been notated on the plans that they may not be aware of in relation to the uh, conditions to keep the fence in uh, Hunter Street. Uh, there is no objection to that, so the stone wall in Hunter Street will stay and that may be confirmed by a condition of consent. Uh, in relation to the stone wall fronting Mayfield Avenue, uh, yes, we do have a, a projection in that to, to afford the site uh, vehicular access, but the stone wall remains to the extent that, or well, the area that sits outside of that garage area. There was a comment on site today, but we'll get to that uh, in a minute. Um, in relation to um, the overall application, I guess uh, I'll just point, make some comments about uh, what we saw before in terms of the side setbacks. They more than double the actual DCP requirements. The upper level is set back, um, I think, anywhere uh, nearly 4.5 metres on both sides setbacks to allow extra views across um, and extra spatial separation uh, at that level. So there's a three metre to four metre side setback at the ground floor just to certain extents. And then there's the 4.5 metres, the majority of the upper level uh, at the first floor. In relation to the controls, it's a two-storey uh, dwelling. The application was revised uh, to address a number of those issues during the course of the assessment process. So it is a two-storey building. Um, it's in two pavilions, which may not read like that on an elevation plan, but if you turn to even the roof plan or the floor plan, you'll see that there's a, 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 a very, I guess, a, 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 a genuine uh, physical break of around four metres between the two pavilions, and that's, that has the effect of breaking up the roof form. Um, it's got a pitch roof on it, uh, which was um, designed through, obviously, a uh, consultation with Council's Heritage Advisor. So a whole range of raft of amendments that were undertaken to bring the design back to where Council felt that it was uh, worthy of approval in terms of the window fenestrations, the arches, uh, were principally removed. There was a lot of detailing done on the plans and, and with the uh, materials and finishes to, uh, uh, we say, bring it into a, uh, a conforming development. Um, some of the other points to mention, uh, obviously complies with 50% landscaped area. It's well below the 8.5 metre height control. If you look at the building uh, from Hunter Street in terms of its transitional or roof or eave line, um, uh, presentation to the street, there's a graduation or a transition between uh, the, the left and the right in terms of one and number 500 Street. 500 Street was put on the plans as in assessment, it's now approved. So if you look at the transitional eave heights between the two sites, our site is lower than one, a little bit high and higher than five, but it basically transitions across the, so across the site. If you compare it to the existing building, the eave line is actually uh, lower. At hun at, um, <coughs> on uh, Hunter Street and, and decently lower on Mayfield Avenue when you compare the eave lines to the existing building. So it is, it is a, yeah, a reasonable sized site. Um, it does comply with the site coverage. 
has more than double side setback control that the ground floor has uh, essentially up the levels at 1.5 under DCP, we've got 4.5. So we've jumped from a point where we're way above the, the minimum requirements of DCP in that, in that respect. Um, in terms of, um, I did mention the, the fences and there was some discussion on site about uh, moving, where, where could the driveway go? Could it move to the, uh, further to the south um, to save the steps? Look, that's possible, but we feel when you do look at that elevation plan, um, with it located to the right, um, it may look a little, well, we think it looks better pushed to the right than actually lined up with that, uh, the physical break between the two pavilions. Um, might look a bit too contrived, I guess, if it occurs in the middle, and probably in my opinion, but others might have a different opinion. But you can see that on uh, drawing for the elevation street drawing, which is, I did have listed here, uh, DA09. Um, so if it was pushed in the middle, um, it may look, uh, we prefer it pushed to the right. Um, it does affect those stairs, I, I grant it does that. But then what it does do is give you a more appreciation of the existing uh, stone wall as a, as a total element. So you could bust it in the middle and then you get two sides of, of, you know, to the left and the right of the actual physical break because of the opening. So it gives her a longer length of run of the existing stone wall, which we think is appropriate. Of that, I'll ask you to endorse recommendation with those conditions. Thank you. Is your architect here? He is. We have some questions. Uh, it's Nevio Casali. All right, the panel will have some questions of you. Yes. No, you can go first. Okay, so um, I'm just wondering whether it's possible to simplify the detailing of the new um, dwelling. Yes. Um, so, so I might just address Andrew's comments first. Um, the, the existing dwelling, um, in my opinion, still has some contrib contributory value. However, I think it is so heavily modified mm -hmm. that I, as a heritage um, Specialist would not say it must remain, um, and I say it because the roof form is so heavily challenged um, on both elevations. The interior, which we saw today, is extensively changed, and I don't think it's um, warranted in this case to require the retention of the existing dwelling. Having said that. Um, I think the stairs, the sandstone stairs, do reflect the history of the site and do probably, we don't know, but probably relate to the house. And it would be appropriate to retain those stairs. Um, so I would suggest that you look for an alternative for your garage um, entry. And, and that, I think there would be two options. One would be on the opposite street, on the other street. Um, Hunter Street, or at the other end of the of the site um, on Mayfield. So mm -hmm. that's okay. I'm just giving you that feedback, um, and I would try to minimise tree loss as well um, in so doing. You know, in, in doing that. Sorry to interrupt you. But, yeah. um, the reason why we chose that point in the driveway was because there were no trees. Yeah, there, okay, I understand. That. Yeah. Yeah. Choice. Yeah. Um, but definitely, we look at it yeah. at the other end of the site and still try to maintain the harmony with the neighbouring wall as well at number one. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is a follow on. The stone is slightly different and the heights are different. But the, the idea was to try and bring a more harmonious look to that point of the street. Yeah. So some of the detailing is. You know, you've got simple pavilions, which mm. is, I think, a good thing from a heritage viewpoint, um, which are symmetrical, yeah. and yet the fenestration isn't necessarily symmetrical behind it. You know, behind the, particularly on the um, on the east elevation, um, you know, you've, the way you've arranged the masonry and glass right. does yes. upsets the symmetry of that. So you might have another look at that. Yes. Um, also, some of the detailing is a bit too faux historical, I think, for the area. 
and it is better to do something a little more contemporary. Not wildly contemporary, but nevertheless <laughs> a little more contemporary. Um, yes. So, so that it's not trying to look old or like a... We were really hoping to not... Yeah. So, so one... It's just very long and narrow windows to yeah. reflect the Huddersfield DCP in that sort of respect as well. Yeah. So, so one suggestion would be that you don't have masonry piers projecting above your first floor level. Right? You do it in timber or whatever the material of the balustrading is. Right? So you've got masonry piers projecting up on the on the veranda. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Capped and <laughs> with some sort of cornice as yes. well by the look of it. Yep. So you, you could actually just delete those and and do something else, you know, some other type of... A more lightweight than your... Yeah, style. yeah, well, yeah, no, just something that doesn't give you that sort of a faux, you know, historical yeah. look. Um, the bullseye window. Um, yeah, I, I understand that yeah. the owner might be keen on those, mm -hmm. but it does give you, again, this sort of faux historical look. You squared those off, for example. Right. Um, if, or, or did something else, you know? It, it, Is it mainly it, the street facade that you're concerned about? Oh, I think both, both side elevations, side elevations as, well. as well. I just think it's a, it's an odd thing. Mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, in in uh, an historic area too. You know, it, they are set in, though, David. Uh, that extra on, on the side they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. I, I know. It's it's really well, you know, it's a and they're, they're up. Close. Look, we would we'll take on board all these. Yeah, it's not, it's yeah. not an issue oh, for us. Yeah. I'm not I, I, I just and try and say that without even checking with him, but yeah. that's not a problem. But those particular bullseyes are actually yeah. very close to the the, the front pavilion, yep. which is closer to the boundary. So we're setting another one and a half meters. So whether you'd see that on the oblique, on the side, you might capture it. Definitely not the first one, but yeah, you, you do. You got but to do on, that. But on the um, yeah, sure. West elevation, sure. You know, I, I think it looks quite odd. Um, now, also on the west elevation, you've got a Juliet, a pair of Juliet balconies with sun hoods over them. Yes. But you've also got full height windows adjacent to each of those. Yes. Which need some sort of sun, sun shading. And, you know, you, you need it from an amenity viewpoint, but you also, if you did um, some sort of sun shading as a device, mm -hmm. it would also give you depth on the facade, yeah. on the elevation. You know, give you shading, yes. which would give you a depth, which mm -hmm. at the moment, it, it's quite flat, that, the, the elevations of the two mm -hmm. pavilions, particularly facing west. So I, I'd encourage you to have a look at that. It's easily done, I think. Yeah, yeah definitely. Right. Uh, and the windows are quite Deep, deep, deep the well, they don't look at to me. 300. 300. Yeah. 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 If you look at the, the cross-section, you can see the... Uh, what, what drawing is that? Have uh, they got a number on uh, uh, It's drawing number 6. 06. The, um, the section itself does cut through the Juliet balcony. But you can actually see the depth of those uh -huh. of those stone yeah. Of those sections. Yeah. Nevertheless, I, I just think you could get a whole lot more depth. Yeah, three hundred. Yeah, it's not very. That's not very. About three hundred fifty. I mean, for the west sun, it's not enough. Mm. Well, we'll need probably retractable blinds because the westward sun is so low that even if you have a huge projection, it's yeah. It's well, well, internally yeah. retractable blinds don't work. Externally, external will change the elevation. Yes. So you know, it's yeah. shown. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Look, that's something we. That's yeah. easily. It's an easy fix, pretty yeah. much. I guess. Sure. sure. Yep. So it's really. And and then, um, the just the extent of glass, and I agree with the. It's a condition report. Yeah. yeah, that's right. On particularly um, on the east elevation, you know, just mm -hmm. just needs sure. to be looked at. I think because. Otherwise, you will end up with a very strong glass facade on the upper level, which you'll see from mm. the wall. Yep. So, so they're my um, comments, and I think they're all fairly they're fine. easily addressed. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Yeah. Do you have any questions? I had some comments. Most of them have been covered. The other references are to the approval of the finishes. Um, we haven't had submitted back to us any darker samples of the um, pure white mountain white which I think is in reference to the approval process that there was it was too light in colour uh, so I don't know what was proposed as an alternative to that 
We looked at a, a Dyker limestone. Yep. We sent some samples to, I think it was an email to Greg Patch with some ideas. Okay. So he, he's probably... Greg Hepburn or something. Okay. Yeah. So probably haven't made their way. There's, yeah. 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 there's, there's a condition anyway. Yeah, there's a condition anyway. There's an evolution. Yeah, no, we yeah. do agree with that. that. Okay. Yeah. That's the eighth and ninth. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But there's an evolution okay. on that. But it doesn't matter it's captured by the condition anyway. It is captured. I just wanted to reassure the neighbours that it was going to be darker in colour and therefore recess back further look a little less large and palatial, which I think is their fear of the the large palatial uh, size of it. Um, the other one is the gold capping paint detail on the fencing, which I assume is no longer relevant because we're keeping the stone wall. That's right. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, and the other was, again, the, the eastern elevation. looks like it needs more masonry in it. It looks, it's, it's, it's in somewhat incongruous with the other elevation. And I understand it's getting a view, yes. and I appreciate it's bifold doors, yes. but it's somewhat incongruous with that. And again, if you could retain the, the heritage stairs, we love Hunters Hill for the stone. Mm. So if we can retain it and stone that's taken out of anywhere else to be reused, because as plain. you know, you yeah. can't find it anywhere else. It's unique to us as yeah. Hunters Hill. It is so much the on-site harvesting. It's, it's really very important. And, and and to be honest with you, that stone will you'll probably come yeah. to pieces in your hands. You'll have to rebuild oh, the Mayfield site anyway. Um, to be, and you're adding 500 mil to the top of that, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So you might want to borrow for that. Um, I think that was the setback. I think, I think that the, the difficulty was that it was it was becoming a bit of a faux chateau. And that may be your brief, which I don't know. But I think that was the fear of it being out of keeping with the area because as you look back along the ridge, you've got all the heritage houses mm. and everything new is down below on the next level yes. and then we have a faux chateau. I think that is the fear of the neighbours. We're scared of Yeah, that's the fear of that. So what I was yeah. talking about is so the simplification. Yes. So it's a little less um, faux chateau. Yeah. There's not been any hesitation. We've, mm -hmm. we've actually worked and amended the plans yeah, as we go. We've listened okay. and there's yeah. been a whole level of extra detail. We're happy to do the conditions and we'll come back. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I think that's it. Can I just make one point? You are part of the community. Yes. We live in a community Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, I think that was maybe, maybe yeah, so the fence on Hunter Street. Um, that really should remain. The stone fence. Yeah. 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 I just want to clarify that. Yeah. And the question is. Three metre opening in Hunter Street. With access that okay. takes you down to the cellar level, which would provide adequate parking. You don't have to do massive excavation. Well, they just is there a site survey of the existing yeah. 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 Is there really the basement yeah. is That's from Mayfield the access is. Yes. But we decommissioned Hunter, but yeah. they want us to keep Hunter. No, I realise that's what I'm trying to yeah. Yeah. we're getting this to and fro. So mm -hmm. we're saying that, 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 there, that there has been a survey done of the existing premises and the entry from Hunter Street and the basement below. Is accessible from Hunter mm -hmm. Street. Well, the present wall, walls as they are, and they don't need to. It really the wall needs to be touched. Okay. There's a three metre opening at Hunter Street presently there, and they drive down the slope. Yep, we've already seen that. The mm. present yep. level mm. and the cellar level, and I have lived there for 67 years. And I played in that cellar. There's plenty of room for parking and things there. There's no need for them to be playing with any stone walls anywhere. Right. They can film within the park, the area they've got there, and get their parking within the area. There's a massive drainage problem. The so houses in number 11 and number 7 both have water drainage problems right. in Mayfield Avenue, and this reflects what we're looking at. We, 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 we had you say that earlier. Colin was saying mean, there's a major drainage problem. We don't have it at number nine because we don't know it well elevated that house. Everyone else that is on stone has major drainage problems. You start playing with the stone there and there's going to be my grandfather owned Mayfield Avenue. He used Mr. Mayfield with his middle name. I can tell you you'll have major problems. That's the beach at the front is and Everything was put there to hold the stone wall 
where it's holding up the whole property there. And if you start digging into it, they've already lost that stone wall in the southern end once to get the drain. You're going to get major problems if you start digging into the stone. So, so if, if you were to get approval to create a new opening on Mayfield, you could use the stone to close the opening on Hunter Street? Yes, definitely. Absolutely. I don't think you've you had your say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you've had your say and we understand it. Oh, I don't think you're hearing. There are two houses presently being flooded. Now, we, 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 we are present discussing some of the design <coughs> features with the architect. You, you've made your point, you've made it more than once, and we understand. Thank you. Uh, any other questions of the architect? No, panel? No? Uh, all right, do we want to discuss this amongst ourselves? I think we do. Mm. Sorry, before we finish, there was a lot of discussion about the removal of trees on site. Yes. We're not removing, but removing two trees that are at the centre of the property, that large stand of trees, which is in the north, east, and the north, west, and the property, that's all being retained. Uh, there are jacaranda trees, I think, that's what we're not doing any work yes, at all. So, we're going to have a talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, in view of what's been put to us, we will retire and discuss the application and come back shortly with a determination. Thank you. Now, where we go? Yep.
I'm pleased to say that the panel has come to a determination. Uh, we believe that this application can be approved subject to some additional conditions which will meet some of the uh, concerns raised by the uh, objectors. In saying that, uh, uh, this development is clearly uh, permissible in the zone. It is consistent with the objectives of the zone and complies with all the relevant development standards comfortably. Uh, so, uh, 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 we are prepared to uh, support the findings contained in the assessment report and endorse the reasons for approval contained in that report, subject to the recommended deferred commencement conditions, including some additional conditions, which, as I've said, will uh, alleviate some of the concerns uh, and uh, make the development uh, acceptable. I'll ask one of the panel members to mm -hmm. announce that. Okay, so the, the additional conditions which I'll read are as follows. And new number three, which is the detailing of the elevations is to be modified to be less historically derivative. And I think I explained what that was. Then a new number four, um, which is a slight modification to the existing number three. So the schedule of finishes being altered to provide for the external walls being finished in a darker recessive colour. And the grit blasted limestone stone cladding being of a darker colour and the window door frames being of a colour in less of a contrast to the satisfaction of council's heritage advisor in, in, the reason to, in order to reduce the visual prominence of the dwelling. And then the final sentence remains, details being provided to council. And then a new, four becomes five. And a new number six, the existing sandstone stairs on the Mayfield Avenue, uh, on, on Mayfield Avenue, are to be retained. A new garage door opening may be provided at the southern end of the garage. The removed sandstone is to be reused to reinstate the wall on the Hunter Street, on Hunter Street, right? i.e. to close up the existing opening. So that's number six. Then the other conditions are renumbered seven, eight, nine, and ten. I mean, and, there's one. and there's an additional condition that goes uh, in Schedule 2, so it'll be a first condition before the special conditions, and that's to read the extent of excavation of the site, not to be in excess of those basement slash access areas as shown on the approved architectural plans. So that is the determination of the panel. It is unanimous, and we thank everyone for your attention. With that, we can move on to the next item on the agenda. This is the proposed uh, alterations uh, and fit out of this building. Uh, it has been referred to the panel because uh, it's the council's own building and has been independently assessed by a consultant planner and it has to be determined by an independent panel. Uh, the panel is prepared to adopt the recommendation uh, and the recommended conditions of consent. We think it is a very nice job. With one, with one exception, sorry, Mayor. Yes. Um, I think Virginia and I both were of the view that the detailing of the balustrade, that's the, the handrail, needs to be a bit more refined. It just needs to be a bit... Um, the ramp? The ramp? ramp. On the ramp. Yeah. So if yeah. we look at the conditions, there's deferred commencement conditions there. Mm -hmm. I think it's covered, isn't it? Uh, there's uh, on page 101. Mm -hmm. if, did you... Do you want to add something there? Like, uh, like a, a five? A five? A new five? A new five. So got... okay. yeah. Wording such as, David? The... Um, balustrade, oh, sorry, the handrail for the access ramp 
is to be detailed. Um, um, sympathetic to the heritage. To the, no. Um, what did we say? Linear. We felt it was too utilitarian. Yeah. Right? yeah. We felt it looked, given that it's on the front facade of a heritage building, and that we are a heritage suburb, that it was very utilitarian. Mm. Could we put a little more design content into it to make it I, yeah. a better statement? Yeah, yeah, I think it would be slender. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so I, mean, I, I know we've got a budgetary constraint, no, and I, under, I understand no. that, that that's... It's, it's not just most ordinary. Yeah, well, I think the yeah. intent was to keep it simple. Yeah, yeah. Open. it can be simple. Yeah, it just looks ordinary. It just, just yeah. needs to be detailed. So, you know, nice. it's, I, I think maybe at the CC stage, yeah. uh, we will be detailed. Mm -hmm. Like other things are conditions. Yeah. So, detailed. Some give me some more criteria. Detailed to the satisfaction of the he council's heritage advisor. Or well, it can't be in this. <laughs> 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 he designed it. Um, well, <laughs> but there is a new one, isn't there? That's right. Let's go. Let's go to the new one. Yes. Yes. Because it's not adding anything to. What's that? Detailed. So, yeah. like I said, heritage advisor yeah. to ensure that the um, the detail of street the street. So, so detailed to be. Um, more contemporary and streamlined. Linear? No, uh, it's not so much. Okay, linear, contemporary and streamlined. Yeah. yeah. This looks like it needs to be thought about. We haven't thought about we just stuck a, an engineering rail in. Does that make sense? We haven't actually given a nod to the, the heritage building, we haven't given a nod to any anything design aesthetically. I just need some, a nod to nothing. I need some words. So so um, more tizzy it up. Stop we can't put tizzy it up. So no, <laughs> we don't want it tizzy it up, we want it actually. We just uh, want it contemporary. Um, yeah, more co more contemporary and um, almost in contrast to what's behind it. Um, refined. Okay. I know that's a that's a wishy so word. Condition five: the handrail for the access ramp is to be detailed to the satisfaction of the council's that. heritage no, no, no. advisor. Yeah. So to as to contemporary be more contemporary. And fine, fine, and, and fine and in detail or something like that. Refined in detail. Refined in detail. Okay. Is that okay yeah. with contemporary, you refined. I think we know what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it down a paper. Well, that's it's what just, I do. It's yeah. just a bit chunky. And, as much you know, as I love Charlie, it looks like Charlie Gilbert. Utilitarian. Yeah, yeah it's, util it's utilitarian. To be less well, we problem. could say to be less utilitarian. Say it. Yes. Say it. I just need some criteria. Yeah. Less, you, less utilitarian so to be, in appearance. So as to be less utilitarian in appearance. In appearance. Yeah. That's what I did. Yeah. Um, yeah. Less you, oh, have right. you got it? Oh, sorry. Did yeah, you get that? The handrail for the access ramp is to be detailed <coughs> to the satisfaction of Council's Heritage Advisor being more contemporary and no, refined? No, no, we've changed that. Okay. So as to be less utilitarian okay, in so appearance. Okay, so we dropped that whole bit. <coughs> yep. So to be less utilitarian, utilitarian in, in appearance. In appearance. Yeah. That's it. Now, did you get those changes that David made? For the last one? Yeah. yeah. No, I might take okay, a photocopy. Can, I've got yeah. the tape as well, but I might okay. take a no, copy as well. Fine. Unanimous? Unanimous, yes, yep. yep. Adopted. Adopted. End of meeting at 5 25. So you've got your wish, Dad. Got your wish. <laughs>